Well, it's time to stretch your legs and take a walk in the park. The sun is shining, and you enjoy the weather and life on the whole. That's when you spot a rapidly growing vertical cloud. Bright white at first, it's approaching alarmingly fast, becoming dense and inky. The sky is darkening, and a gust of wind blows the hat off your head. And then, your hair starts to stand on end. That's your cue to run for your life. You're about to be hit by lightning. At this very moment, positive charges are rising through your body. They're reaching toward the negatively charged part of the storm. If you don't react fast, these charges will meet, and it'll end badly for you. If there's nowhere you can hide, crouch down and try to make yourself smaller than the objects around you. Don't lie flat on the ground. It may be wet and thus a great conductor of electricity. There are also other signs that scream danger during a lightning storm. Your palms may begin to sweat. You might hear bizarre crackling, buzzing, or vibrating sounds coming from metal objects nearby. Your skin can start to tingle. There might be a strange metallic taste in your mouth. If you're sure you're not chewing on tinfoil, then look out. Plus, you're likely to smell chlorine. That's ozone. Electrical charges split the molecules of nitrogen and oxygen, which are the main gases forming the atmosphere, into separate atoms. When these atoms come together again, some of them produce molecules made up of three oxygen atoms. That's ozone. You can smell it during a thunderstorm because downdrafts bring it from high altitudes to your nose level. You can figure out how close a thunderstorm is by measuring the time between spotting the lightning and hearing the thunder. Every 5 seconds is 1 mile. The sky over your head is darkening and turning ominously green. Something hits you on the cheek. Ouch! It hurts! You pick up the offending object. It's a massive hailstone. But it's not that cold outside, and it's not raining. You notice how still everything is, how quiet. There's no wind whatsoever. It makes you think about the calm before the storm. And indeed, soon you hear some noise. It's approaching rapidly and turns into a loud roar, as if a freight train is moving towards you. Only, it's not a train. It's a tornado, and you have almost no time to escape. The funnel isn't visible behind a cloud of debris. But you can't mistake this rotating column of air for anything else. If the tornado catches you on the road, get as far from your car as you can. This will prevent the vehicle from being hurtled toward you. Find a ditch, lie down in it, and cover your head. If you're inside, get away from windows and hide underground if possible. Now, you're at the seaside, walking along the shore and enjoying a light breeze. Suddenly, the ground starts shaking under your feet. Must be an earthquake! The next weirdness you notice is the water retreating from the beach at breakneck speed. It leaves behind the exposed ocean floor, reefs, and even fish. That's when you hear a distant roaring sound. It's a tsunami, and you only have a few minutes to save your life. Get to high ground immediately. A giant wave is already speeding toward the shore. It's not the only way a tsunami can creep up on you. It doesn't necessarily come crashing against the shore as a series of huge waves. A tsunami can look like a rapidly rising tide. It usually goes hand-in-hand with severe underwater turbulence. It pulls people under the surface and tosses heavy objects around. You can also notice seawater bubbling, swirling, and creating bizarre patterns. It's another sure sign a tsunami's coming. Your dog's restless. It's scratching the entrance door, roaming around the apartment, and trying to hide in the corner. Usually calm and docile, the pooch is now howling and barking. The weather's also been crazy for the past several days. It's hot one day and chilly 24 hours later. Plus, you've noticed that the stream near your house has livened up, bubbling as it's rushing past. Only when glasses start to clink in your cupboard do you realize what it means. The clatter is produced by foreshocks, tiny earthquakes leading up to the main event. Earthquakes often occur in clusters. If there are several weak quakes, a much bigger one might be on the way. Sometime before the disaster strikes, you might notice bizarre blue lights. Some of them seem to be coming from the ground, others are hovering in the air. These are so-called earthquake lights. Emitted from rocks under great stress, They can be seen days or mere seconds before the ground starts shaking. At the same time, some experts doubt earthquake lights exist. 
If you think an earthquake is about to happen and there's a catfish in your aquarium, pay attention to its behavior. Scientists have proved this species can react to earth tremors. The fish become restless when seismic activity is high. Some bugs can feel a storm coming. They get ready for the natural disaster by stopping any movement. That's why, if you notice that lots of insects around you look drowsy, search for shelter. As for bees, they can predict heavy rainstorms. They begin to work much harder the day before it starts raining. Square waves occur when two wave patterns crash into each other. This phenomenon looks awesome, but only if you're watching it from the shore. Don't even think of getting in the water to play in such waves. In that place, there are cross currents that can easily pull even a skilled swimmer under the surface. And if you see wild choppy waves carrying ocean debris and seaweed, stay out of the water too. It can be a sign of a strong rip current. It can carry you far away from the ocean. Boom! This word isn't nearly enough to illustrate the explosion, the most powerful one you've ever seen. And what's most important, it's a lake that's just blown up. Hey, all you wanted to do is light up some fireworks in this picturesque place. But you must have totally missed the danger strictly no fire warning sign along the way. And now, the wall of fuming water is quickly closing in on you. But first, let's rewind to the beginning of the whole thing. You're in Alberta, Canada, and have just arrived to Abraham Lake for a hike of your life. The lake is frozen, and the view is awesome. Those bubbles under the ice look like hundreds of frozen jellyfish. In reality, they're made of methane, a toxic and highly flammable gas produced by bacteria living on the bottom of the lake. That's why the sign is there. If you so much as light a match on this ice, it might set the whole thing on fire. Luckily, you've taken note of it on the way here and put away the fireworks you wanted to light up. Another place, another time. Another lake. This one's not frozen. In fact, it probably hasn't seen a winter since the last ice age. We're in Cameroon now, and the place is called Lake Nios. It looks peaceful, but make no mistake, its orange-brown waters hide a deadly secret. The lake rests atop a highly volatile area, and the fissures in its bottom let out massive amounts of carbon dioxide. When the ground shifts, this gas spills out of the lake and flows miles around it. The concentrations are so high that one breath of it would make you faint and you'd have zero chance of waking up. Eh, you get the picture. But the most sinister thing about it is that the CO2 doesn't have a smell or color. So you wouldn't even see it coming. Local authorities have set up a system of pipes that drains the gas from the lake, making it mm, relatively safe for people and animals in the vicinity. And another toxic lake, Kivu, on the border of Congo and Rwanda, has even been made to provide energy for millions of people thanks to its gases. While we're in Africa, the Danakil Depression in Ethiopia is also worth a blood-curdling visit. Dubbed the hottest place on Earth, it sure lives up to its name. The ravine is peppered with extremely hot springs, toxic acid ponds, and active volcanoes. The landscape is surreal, to say the least, and is probably the only inhabited place on Earth where no life can exist. The Afar people live here all year round and gather salt around the springs for trade, while scientists couldn't find any evidence of microbial life in those. Humans are notorious for settling in places most would gladly avoid. Take Mount Tambora in Indonesia. Thousands of people have been living on and around its slopes for centuries until the fateful day in 1815. Tambora is a volcano. And that year, it decided to erupt, resulting in a blast that obliterated everything on the island and was heard almost a thousand miles away. It spewed out so much volcanic ash that it fell in sheets on the surrounding isles and caused a year without a summer in the whole northern hemisphere. It was the most powerful eruption in the last 10,000 years, and Mount Tambora became as much as 5,000 feet lower after it. But back to our time. There's an island you won't be allowed to visit, but I bet you wouldn't want to anyway. The Snake Island in Brazil is home to thousands of snakes, as its name implies. The moment you step on its soil, you're in grave danger of being bitten by a viper. The island is also the only place you can meet a golden lancehead viper, the encounter of a lifetime, literally. 
This place is so dangerous that Brazil has banned tourists and any other visitors from it unconditionally. Now, if you step on a sea urchin, you're gonna know right away. <laughs> Look at those spikes. Get the point? <laughs> Ow! While they're not aggressive, they've got a great defense going against any creatures that want to eat them. Venomous spikes and a poisonous bite. Eh, pick your poison, literally. They live in all of the oceans of the world, so avoiding them is out of the question. They mostly hang out in shallow water, hiding in rock pools and reefs. So unmindful people step on them a lot. The long, venomous spikes of the urchin look like needles. Feel like them, too. They can go in quite deep. Plus, they release a strong toxin. The cure? Remove the spikes quickly and wash with salt water. What small marine mammal just loves sea urchins? Any guesses? It's the sea otter. Don't let its cuteness get in the way of its toughness. Mm. These mammals rarely leave the water, and that even includes taking naps. Holding hands with other otters keeps them from floating away from the pack. Their fur is the densest on the planet, up to a million hairs per square inch. Hey, we humans only have about 2,000. They're also good with tools. They can use rocks to hammer open shells. Hey, how else would you open a sea urchin? You ought to try it sometime. <laughs> Stonefish aren't going to win any beauty contest unless the pageant is for best rock lookalike. Their tiny, unreflective eyes and rough skin blend in perfectly with their environment. A large head, an even bigger mouth, and a home full of… yeah, it's rocks. And just because you're on the beach doesn't mean you're safe. Stonefish can survive for 24 hours out of the water. Stepping on one or even handling one won't be that fun. Their dorsal fin spines have extremely strong venom. It shoots out when they get stepped on and it can lead to paralysis or even heart failure. You'll need help fast. No wonder they're one of the most dangerous creatures in the water or anywhere. Be careful when scrambling around rocky areas. They love to play hide and seek. Box jellyfish tentacles grow up to 10 feet long, and each tentacle has 5,000 stinging cells. Not bad for a creature that's mostly just water. Their venom is strong enough to paralyze anything they want to eat. Now, if you happen to get stung, it's going to hurt. A lot! Its toxins contain proteins that affect the heart, skin cells, and even our nervous system. No wonder it's considered one of the most dangerous creatures on the planet. I wouldn't recommend using sunscreen, soda, coffee, or other older methods. They don't work. Your best bet is some good old-fashioned seawater. Looks like jellyfish are the rulers of the ocean, not sharks. Hey, look around your local rock pool. You might see this sweet little octopus. It's tiny and has blue rings. Cute! But don't fall for it now. This octopus wouldn't make a good pet. When provoked, the octopus will start flashing neon blue to warn everyone to stay away. And I highly recommend you do just that. Their venom is a thousand times more dangerous than cyanide. There's also no known antidote for it. The best thing to do? Take a quick picture and walk away. Better yet, just walk away. Now, not even the octopuses are normal down under. I'll stick with my shrimp on the bar if you may. Do you see that large log near the ocean floor? Maybe it's part of an old ship, a treasure, gold, diamonds. Hey, I'm rich! As you get closer, you notice something. It's swimming! It's not a shark or a dolphin. It's a saltwater crocodile. Now, don't panic. If you bump into one of these reptiles in the sea, it's unlikely it'll think of you as food. Crocodiles have a special valve in their throat that stops them from drowning underwater, but that doesn't mean they can't bite. Usually, they're heading to a nearby island, and the quickest way there is to body surf. They can't really take the ferry. Watching one from a distance should be okay, just don't swim to shore right away. They love to ambush their lunch in the shallow water. If there's one time I'd like to see a great white shark, it's when I'm diving with crocodiles. They'll gladly take a crocodile-sized nibble, given the right motivation. Going out on a boat off the coast of Mexico sounds like the perfect vacation. The sun, the blue water, the most endangered sea creature? Wait, what? The vaquita isn't dangerous, but don't expect it to stick around to say hello or sign any autographs. It's incredibly shy. 
This little cow, that's what the Spanish means, is one tiny sea mammal. With those black markings around its eyes, it looks more like a sea panda to me. Seeing one should make you feel very special. They're on the brink of extinction. You're walking down the beach toward the water, but something feels different today. The water is bright green, and your nose gets filled with a recognizable pungent stench of rotting eggs. Should you probably come closer to check this unusual phenomenon? Mm -mm. Stop right now until it's too late. What you see is called a harmful algal bloom, also called algae bloom, and approaching it is a very bad idea. This bloom contains algae that can produce dangerous toxic gases. That's what makes previously popular touristy places deserted and outright treacherous. You can come to a sea or lake beach and spot something that looks like blue-green foam floating on or just beneath the surface of the water. Or it may resemble streaks of bright green paint. Some blooms, called red tides, can color the water brown or red. Anyway, once you notice something like that, try to stay away, keep in check that curiosity of yours, and don't go exploring. When algae decompose, Pockets of toxic hydrogen sulfide gas are trapped under the crust. If you unknowingly step on such a pocket, you'll set the gas free and can accidentally inhale it. It's enough to say that this is likely to end tragically. On some beaches, bulldozers pile up the algae into dump trucks and bring it to special centers. There, workers dry the seaweed and get rid of it. But sometimes, these centers have to be temporarily closed. Algae mixed with sand and mud smell so awful that local people can't sleep at night because of the stench. There are three types of dangerous algae that can gather into harmful algal blooms. Cyanobacteria, dinoflagellates, and diatoms. All of them are made up of minuscule floating life forms that use sunlight to create their own food. The blue-green algal blooms are caused by cyanobacteria. They produce dangerous toxins that destroy nerve tissue. It can get so bad that water treatment plants might be unable to get rid of the toxin. Then, local people are recommended not to use tap water. Dinoflagellates and one diatom species are responsible for creating red tides. They occur mostly in ocean bays. For a red algal bloom to form, the water has to be warm, salty, and rich in nutrients. Such blooms release a huge amount of different toxins. In Texas, red tides used to happen once in a decade. Now they occur every three years. In Florida, red algal blooms appear every year. Long, skinny diatoms can also produce toxic substances harmful to people. Even worse, if some shellfish, like razor clams, eat a lot of this plankton, they become toxic too. That's why cooking them for dinner can lead to a disaster. It's one of the reasons why marine waters are usually monitored. If toxin levels become too high, beaches get closed for shellfish harvesting. Harmful algal blooms can last for several days to a couple of months. They rid the water of oxygen, causing marine life to disappear. But it gets even worse when microbes start to decompose the algae at the end of the bloom. They consume even more oxygen in the process, and no fish can survive it. This creates huge areas of water almost totally devoid of oxygen and any kind of plant or animal life. Harmful algal blooms appear in the regions with too many nutrients in the water. And the most common of these nutrients comes from agriculture and other industries. Plus, winter monsoons have become warmer and now carry more moisture. This allows algae to gather in huge blooms. Some of them get so gigantic that the thick green swirls can be seen from space. Not all algal blooms are harmful, though. Some of them just add a terrible taste to the water, change its color, or produce revolting smells. Unfortunately, you won't be able to tell toxic algae from totally harmless kinds, judging only by their appearance. Algae aren't the only organisms that look deceitfully harmless. Here are other marine inhabitants you should never ever touch. The Arukanji jellyfish, found in Australia, looks tiny and totally innocent. But appearances are deceitful, and this baby, the size of a human thumbnail, is actually lethal. During stinger season, which lasts from November to May, tons of beaches get closed because of these itsy-bitsy creatures. What makes the jellyfish particularly dangerous is their miniature size. You will simply fail to notice one while swimming. Oops. The blue-ringed octopus looks not just harmless, it's breathtakingly beautiful. 
but don't let the looks fool you. You wouldn't want to disturb this relatively small 8-inch long creature. It carries enough venom to bring down 26 adults within mere minutes. And once the animal feels threatened, well, you can probably guess the outcome. At the same time, when left alone, the octopus is absolutely docile. The infamous box jellyfish, named for its cubic body shape, lives in the Indian and Pacific Oceans. Stay clear from a creature with a squarish bell and long, dangling tentacles. And even if you see only a single tentacle, without the jellyfish attached to it, don't come close or touch it. The box jellyfish can grow up to 10 feet, and each of its tentacles has about 500,000 microscopic harpoons to inject venom. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.